Wait, what? I'm back and today I have a few different items to show you and some of them we're actually gonna get to see and others we're not. That's all gonna make sense in just two seconds. That's four. Two seconds! So what's important to note here is that everything you are about to see was sent to me for free at various times during this summer, which includes this STEM Solar Robots 8-in-1 Solar Robot Kit, as well as an Ooze Labs Colorful Crystals Lab. Now these are both educational STEM type activities, which means that even though technically you're always learning no matter what you're doing, you will learn more in these kits because it's a focus on math, science, stuff like that. That's usually what STEM means. However, when I agreed to check these out because I really do like the idea of them, I forgot that it won't be cool of me as either a human being, an educator, or a mother to do an activity that my kids aren't involved in. I feel like that's a crime. And I don't put my kids on my channel because I want them to have their own life. So instead, I'm going to open them, do the activities with my children, and then take progress photos along the way so that you can see what we thought of them. And now that that's taken care of and you hopefully understand what my mind is not letting my mouth say to you right now, we can move on to what's its face. But before we do, I just wanna let you know that once again, these items here were sent to me for free. Like everything else, I kind of decide whether or not I wanna check them out. But as soon as I got this email, I decided I really did want to because I like the idea of them because I feel like they could be more useful as a tool than as a toy. But Jen, what are you talking about? I'll show you a new line of plush characters. Look how cute this is! Here is one. I was sent three, so this is a dog. And don't worry, we're gonna take a better look at them once we get down to the table. Second is a gray kitty. And lastly, we have a little teddy bear. And, please don't fall. There we go. And, oh, the dog's ears are blocking. Here they are all together. Ooh, let's put those down. So the reason I said yes to these is because one, every child enjoys a good plush, whether it's to add them to role play, hug them, squish them when they're feeling sad or happy or excited, go to the doctors with them when they're scared, stuff like that. But a lot of people might not realize, or maybe you do, but just don't put as much thought into it as me because I'm a little crazy, that plush characters are also a really good tool for children who can't express themselves, or they might be super shy, or maybe they're even nonverbal. In fact, there are even adults that could use plush characters or toys to communicate their feelings. And I like the idea of this one specifically because it comes with six faces inside its head so that you could use this as a toy, creating more emotion for make-believe or as an actual tool for those who might not otherwise be able to tell you how they're feeling. Basically, you get a plush character. It's nice and soft from the head down and the head has a built-in mechanism that allows us to see six different emotional faces. And we'll get to those by twisting the this hard plastic star on top. Oh, that's so cute. I was trying to see it in the camera. So you turn it and boop, that one's angry, happy, or maybe that one's happy. Maybe the other one's just like excited. It doesn't really say, but how do we get to the other three? Oh, you twist. We have a sleepy face. On the back of this one, we have, oh, a sad face. And on the back of the angry one, we have a surprised face. Do you see how these could be useful tools? Like, this is awesome to me. I have personally worked with children and adults that are nonverbal, and I know that they've used props to help express how they're feeling. Oh, hold on, let's try this. For the puppy dog, so cute. Yeah, it looks like the faces are the same for all the characters. Now, I think it's very obvious that this is a really cute toy for any child, but I do really think that they would be a great tool for somebody who might need it as an expressive device. And definitely a great addition to any librarian or educator or even parents repertoire for storytelling. Make them come alive, folks. Here's the teddy bear, by the way. Ooh. Wait, what? <gasps> no. What's happening here? Oh, my teddy bear. Try this way. Look, are you seeing this? He's laughing at me. But one is stuck. Oh, that's no good. And on the back of him, he's crying. Happy? Sad. That's how I felt. Happy a minute ago, sad now. I'm definitely gonna have to email the company. This is a good opportunity to see what they will do because everything that I've noticed so far is really good quality, which I'm gonna show you in a second because we're gonna switch down to the table. And even the piece that has popped out is good quality. Like it's not actually broken. It seems as though, 
based on what I could tell because I could see inside its head. There's just a metal spoke on the top and bottom that sits inside a little hole. So I could probably put it back in myself, but I'd have to take apart the actual fur and unscrew something, which I don't want to do because I don't want to break it further. But uh, since it's already out, let's just use this opportunity to check out what the inside looks like. Oh, that looks terrifying. Hold on. Can you see it now? The inside is a big empty cavity so that the faces can spin. But as cool as that is to see, it's not what somebody is going to be paying for. So instead of proceeding up here, we're gonna switch down now and take a look at everything close up and check for quality and anything else that might be wrong. That way I can email the company with all of my concerns at once and see how they respond. All right, it is time to get up close and personal with What's Its Face, which is a great name because I don't think they actually have their names. Oh wait, is that its name? Meowza? Okay, with Meowza, the gray cat with six faces. I already mentioned it, but the body is pretty plush and soft. It's just the head that is hard and that makes complete sense. So this cat is all gray with a pink heart on its back, as well as little sections of pink in the ears. The outer portion of the head is fuzzy, but it's covering a hard plastic shell, which is holding in the mechanism that holds all the faces and we control that with the knob on top of the head. That one makes me sad, so there we go. A nice sleepy kitty. And then you just rotate this little face here to get the opposite. And they show all six faces on the outside of the tag as well, but it doesn't say underneath what they are. Although for the most part, it looks like just a friendly greeting or smile, a surprised face, sleepy, sad, angry, and super excited. And the rest of the body is for the most part just filled with fluff, except for the feet, which feel like plastic pellets. And they also have embroidered little paws on the bottom. And after giving it the once over, I'm happy to uh, let you know that I haven't found anything wrong. And that's good because I really like the idea of these and I didn't want to find a bunch of factory defects. Then I wouldn't be able to recommend something that I don't feel 100% comfortable saying is good. Because I like the idea of these and I really do think it's important for children to understand their feelings and have a way of expressing them at an early age. So yes, that's the kitty. Let's check out the dog next. The rest of these should go by pretty quickly because other than the species and the colors of the character, the details are the same. So the dog is white with brown ears, brown paws, and facial features. Basically at this point we are checking for stitching and quality and to make sure that no faces pop off. No plushies were harmed in the making of this video. Oh, so sad. And this one also has a heart on the back. It's brown and so is the tail. Before we move on, let's check the name. Poochie Pie. Oh, that needs a happier face for an animal with the name Poochie Pie. We need a happy face. There we go. And I'm happy to announce that Poochie Pie is defect free. And lastly, we have our sad fallout faced teddy bear who is named Teddy Bear. How original. This one is a light golden brown with brown features. So there's a brown heart on the back, inside of the ears, and on the pad of the feet. Oh, which also have a bit of white. And other than the face that fell out, everything else on this plush looked really good. So when I email the company, I'll just make sure to add photos of just the sad face that's falling out and maybe the empty cavernous face hole so that they know I wasn't able to stick it back in. Which means I'm done with these guys for now and I will update you once I hear back from them. In the meantime, we're gonna check out the box for the Colorful Crystals Lab, open it up, see what's inside, and get the lab station set up so I could try it with my kids today after school. Inside this kit, we're gonna get 32 pieces, 11 experiments, a 24 page manual, as well as our very own lab setup with stickers to personalize. So if rocks and minerals are on your child's interest list, crystal experiments could be in your future. And if a large kit like this isn't something that you're interested in, I have seen mini crystal kits at dollar stores before, but I haven't tested them. This is the experiment manual. Inside we'll see everything that is supposed to come with our kit. They've also covered first aid and safety information and instructions for disposing our waste. We have full color instructions and information on all the pages, which is wonderful. Starting with crystals that grow in nature. The next set are crystals and chemistry, and the last set of experiments are for crystalline jewels. And then we get to learn about quartz. 
That's a really nice manual. Next up is a very bright white lab station. We've just got little dishes and a lid, but unfortunately, this one here, you can't see it through the lights and the camera. Oh, maybe you can right there. There is a large crack and it actually goes right through. So I'm hoping that that won't matter, but chances are I'm gonna need to put a clear piece of tape to seal it. Luckily, this one here is not cracked because there is another. We've also got some measuring cups and a little dome and a bag of test tubes and materials. And then in this bag, we have the remaining pieces of the lab station. Thankfully, the fifth page has the instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble that. So from what I can tell, this lab is currently set up, excluding the stickers, which I'm gonna leave for my kids to decorate and make it their own. Other items that we have here include a really long stir stick, which is gray, it looks like a big popsicle stick, as well as some gray plastic tweezers, and they're nice and long with a pointy tip, as well as some white rope and two red Pac-Mans. <laughs> These are like a thick cardstock fiber paper, and they're red and white. And to be honest, I'm hoping the kids choose to do this activity first, because not only is it the very first one in the book, but it doesn't seem as though it's going to take too long. It says 20 minutes is all it will take for the first crystals to form, so maybe we'll actually be able to have some footage today to add to this video. That could be exciting. And as for the workstation in the back, we have a transparent plastic test tube with a blue lid and there's a hole in the center. Whereas this smaller test tube is numbered along the sides and has a screw on blue plastic top. And I've got all the different materials ready. They're each individually sealed in little bags. We'll be able to store something up there, hang some rock crystals off here, which is why we have the white rope, and do other stuff with these. And here is what our lab is looking like now that the kids have added some stickers. We've built our little volcano by carefully folding that filter paper to form a cone and then set it into the proper area that they've indicated on our workstation. After we finished that, my daughter poured the magic water into the little recess with our volcano, and apparently after about 20 minutes, the first crystals will form, but they will be very delicate, so we have to make sure not to bump or shake it. Here we are with the time lapse of the first 20 minutes. As you can see, not much happened other than the color coming out into that magic water. And here we are again at the one hour and 45 minute mark, and it has been quite boring. So boring that my children have in fact left me, but jokes on them because they have finally begun forming. And here we are after six hours. There are some tall spiky crystals, but not as much as I thought we would have at this point. Okay guys, here is the final update. My daughter poured the last drops of the magic liquid yesterday at 2.05 p.m. and it is now about 10.45 a.m. the next day. And this is what we have, an almost completely covered mini red volcano. And as you can see, the majority of the liquid has been sucked up inside the filter paper, resulting in some fiber little spiky red fluffy crystals. And on the opposite side, we have a little growth of white crystals, which I think is pretty neat. Hello, it's me, Jen, back at the chair, and it has been exactly 48 hours, I don't know why I did that, since we started the experiment. And finally, we have a very puffy, cloud-like, crystalline, thing growing at our lab station and I'm pretty excited to show you the absolute final result before I shake it and watch it implode because I just feel like that would be super satisfying. But before I show it to you, I just want to say that I'm pretty sure this is what the volcano was supposed to look like at the five hour mark or at least according to the instructions and I truly believe that it would have had we not done the experiment in the basement because it's very cool and damp down here and I think that might have prevented all the liquid from absorbing into the filter paper earlier resulting in a a slower formation of crystals. I wonder if they mentioned anywhere in the instructions about what kind of environment to do this in. Maybe I just didn't notice. What? No. It says, and I quote, your experiment area should be set up in a quiet room. The kitchen is not suitable for the experiments because the risk is too great that chemicals could get into food or be confused with food. A cool basement or garage is the best choice. That means the cool air down here did not or should not have hindered the evaporation process. So why did it take 48 hours to get to the point that it should have at the five hour mark? I'm confused. I really don't know. But what I do know is it does work. It just took its sweet old time. So either way, if you know somebody who's interested in crystals, this could still be something that would be of interest to them. And a pretty neat gift that is apparently gonna teach them patience as well as interesting facts about rocks and minerals. So there's that. But before we can end it, you gotta see it and watch it. Poof. It's not gonna poof 
It's just gonna, but still. I'm just gonna go really slow, hold on. I'm doing it. Imagine I just fell right now, that would suck. Look how cool that is. The crystals and little clouds, as it were, have turned red because of the dye that was in the filter paper. And it's sort of forming over the side of the workstation. It looks like a crystalline entity from Star Trek or something, but on a very minute scale. Worry not, my friends. I have seen absolutely zero movement and uh, nothing strange has happened in this basement, so I think we're safe. But not for long, because I want to touch it. Actually, maybe I won't touch it. Maybe I'll just tap it. What's gonna happen? Hey, it's safe. What's happening? Oops. Oh, well that's a bummer. <laughs> I really wanted to just, or watch it, sorry, you know? It does smell weird. It smells kind of like something that has had flowers stuck into it for a month and now there's just like this faint memory of flowers in the air. It's very strange to me. Okay, there you have it guys. That's the end of the volcano, which means we can finally close the chapter on the teddy bear who lost two faces. Technically one, but it has two. You know where I'm going with this. In case you've forgotten, these are the What's It's Face characters that we checked out at the beginning of this video. There was, of course, the teddy bear, who was missing one of his faces, the gray cat, and the brown and white puppy dog. And these characters had changeable faces in the form of three that spin around inside its head through a plastic star on top. And with each face that we got, we were able to spin them around, resulting in a total of six. However, we did of course lose one. So once I finished checking these out and filming the footage at the table, I made sure to take pictures of the inside, whoops, of the inside of the teddy bear along with a hanging out face, but I sent the one where he was crying. And I sent that off to the company to let them know that I did in fact receive one that was broken, or at least not put together properly. And they responded really quickly, letting me know that they'd be happy to ship out another. So two and a half weeks later, and here we are. I picked up a package, sliced open the top and realized it was my new What's It's Face replacement. There's no note inside or anything, just the bear securely packaged in bubble wrap to ensure that no further harm comes to these sweet little teddy bears. And here he is. I'm gonna quickly give his full body the once over just to see that everything is on the up and up. And it is, I'm really happy because it would be really awful to have to email them again. And now the real moment of truth is all in the face. Which one was it that fell off before? So the smile had the sadness on the back. Let's go. Not that that really matters. I mean, any of them could have fallen off, but anyways, you know what I meant. So, ah, his smile is there. And so is his sadness. Perfect. Give it a twist, looking sleepy. And lastly, although I think we started here, didn't we? We've got our angry face and surprised. And there you go, guys. A spinning face, well, I guess that's just one. A completely together teddy bear. I'm really, really happy about this because now I can 100% with confidence say how much I love these more than just the idea that I created for them, which completely makes absolute sense by the way, just in case you're still on the fence about that. But I'm really happy with the overall quality I was to begin with. It was just that face that threw me off. And now that I know that they're willing to correct any issues that should arise, it makes me feel better when I say that if you're interested in something like this, whether just as a play object for your child or to use as a tool or learning device in any way that I think you'd be really happy with it. And also they're just really cute. But I don't think I actually gave any pricing for them. So just in case I didn't, these are available on their website, Amazon and at Walmart for about $24.99 if you're in the States. And I did see them on Amazon.ca, but they were sold out and there was no pricing information. So just like everything else I review here, if you are interested in what you saw today and you'd like to pick one up for yourself, then just check out your local retailers and wait until you find a deal that works for you and your budget. Wait, we need a happier face than that. Oh, that's not it either. There you go. And I believe that is the end of everything that I have to say. It's been a three week journey, friends. I think it's time to call it quits. So if you know somebody who would enjoy today's video because they like educational tools, cool 
plush characters with new features that are pretty interesting, to be honest, because I haven't seen something like this before, or you just think that they'd like to see a super long experiment that should have only taken five hours, then please share this video with them. And if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video, how you felt about seeing that poor Teddy once again with his little face, or why you think our crystal experiment did not go according to the manual, because I think I just debunked the basement theory. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!